What's going on, Tribe? Happy International Women's Day. My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia. And we are the co-founders of Glamorina. Glamorina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired active wear, intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes. Welcome to Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women entrepreneurs, working nine to five jobs, motherhood, self-care, and everything in between. Yeah. So before we dive into today's topic, today's episode, we want to do a mental health check-in as we do every episode. So Kia, how are you feeling today? How are you (laughs) feeling this week? I'm feeling pretty good, I would have to say. Um, There's no complaints, you know? I'm not like overly tired or overly excited about anything in particular. I'm just, um, it's a lot of amazing things happening with Glamorina specifically. And so I feel like I'm just like mentally getting prepared for all the things that we have to do (laughs) as, uh, as business owners. So I'm doing pretty good though. How about you, Nicole? How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm always taking it a day at a time. Um, excited for everything that is ahead for Glam Marina this year. Um, a little bit of an- anxiousness um, mm-hmm. just with life. So many things happening. So just trying to, you know, not feel overwhelmed, but excited and nervous and everything at the same time. But overall, I think my mental health is is doing pretty good this week. I'm not stressed. I'm not depressed. I'm, I'm in a good space. Good. Good to hear. Yeah. So if you guys are listening to this podcast episode, make sure you're doing a self mental health check in or check in with someone that you love. Mm -hmm. We want to do that every week because it's just important to check on yourself, check on your loved ones and their mental health. Definitely. I like that we do the the mental uh, health check ins every time we do our podcast. It kind of reminds me to do that with myself every day when I wake up in the morning. It's just like, okay, how am I feeling? What's going on? And your mental health check in doesn't have to even be in the mornings. It could be at the end of the day. Yeah. You're like, how was this day for me? Kind of like give yourself an opportunity to unload, unpack the day um, and, and check in with yourself just to make sure that you're good. Or if there's something that you need that you can do differently the next day. Yeah, of course. Definitely. So in today's episode of Behind Glam Marina, Moms on a Mission, we want to talk about this year's International Women's Day theme, which is embracing equity. So hashtag embracing equity. So what does embracing equity mean? Um, According to internationalwomensday.com, equity means creating an inclusive world. So because we're such an inclusive brand, we definitely wanted to touch on this topic. I mean, why not? It's International Women's Day. Um, So that's what we're going to be covering in this week's episode. So before we get started in the conversation, let's just kind of define and really understand the difference between equity and then equality, because sometimes people get that confused. So according to an article posted by George Washington University, equality means each individual or group of people is given the same resources or opportunities, which, you know, everyone would argue just about that we are all equal. But equity recognizes that each person has different circumstances and allocates the exact resources and opportunities needed to reach an equal outcome. Very interesting. Yeah, and this was this was definitely an eye opener for me because you don't really think, especially me, think about the differences. Like equality is one thing we've been fighting for equality all our lives, you know, as black yeah. people, as women. But then when you think about equity and how mm-hmm. that just elevates the idea of equality, yes. it's, it's, it's just different. It, it's so much significant, so much more significant because you can't quite give um, two people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, the same exact resources and expect the same outcome or the same level of mm-hmm. success. So equity, you know, having the idea that it needs to be, um, catered whatever you give that person Mm. needs to actually be catered to their specific circumstances like black people we may need you know if you give each of us a hundred dollars white woman black woman you black Mm -hmm. people may need like we were saying earlier like financial advising on top of that hundred dollars or 
some type of training on top of that because we don't come from generational wealth. So sometimes we right. need a little bit um, additional assistance to to kind of reach the same plateau as the next, you know, other races. Absolutely. And I, I, I like this topic um, because it's not something that I rarely think about, or I'm, sh- I'm sure I probably think about it, but like subconsciously. Um, but I like the article that we found and it really talks about how equity is more complicated than equality. Um, because equity has to do a lot with fairness. And sometimes people um, often disagree on like what's just or what's fair, like you said in the example. Um, So here's a good example. Nicole just mentioned it for equity. You have a white woman and a black woman. You give them each $100. That will be equal. That's equality. Unfortunately, if the white woman, which historically this is typically the case, um, white people have a bit of a head start than black people, whether it's generational wealth, they have access to resources, they um, might have other uh, opportunities or things to help them decide what to do with that hundred dollars compared to a black woman. Of course, it's not everybody. We're just talking about just in historical um in terms of historically black people are a little further behind than white people in terms of finances or access to resources, um, having generational wealth and owning things. So, you know, it's not quite equal to give just both of them a hundred dollars. Like you mentioned, Nicole, it's really about that black woman might need a hundred dollars as well as, you know, a financial class or, you know, an, an advisor or something like that. Because again, the white woman and the black woman come from two different backgrounds and one lacks the opportunity to really know what to do with that hundred dollars compared to the white woman. So it's a, it's kind of, it can get confusing. It's like the examples are clear, but mm-hmm. I can see how it can get confusing and how a lot of people may argue, you know, well, that's, that's not fair. Right. Why does the white woman right. only get the hundred, but the black woman will get a hundred plus, you know, some extra help. Like how come that's not really fair, but, um, it's very important for us to distinguish between equality and equity and just have a good understanding of what equity means and why it's important to have this discussion. Yeah, definitely. And and I can see that too. I can, I can hear, you know, maybe someone who's not in our community or in our demographic listening to this episode and like, well, (laughs) how come you get that extra? Like, you know, I I want to get that too, but it's just like, we have to really look at the facts. We have to look at the facts. We have to look at the history of this country, the world we live in. Right. And, Unfortunately, black people have been behind. We still have not really received reparations for everything that we've been through. So mm-hmm. because we are historically behind, it is fair. It mm-hmm. is fair to give us those additional resources because we don't have that. Our parents, exactly. our, our ancestors d- didn't come from money. Our a- ancestors didn't own things historically. So mm-hmm. and not in this your, country. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you might have your select few of people, maybe their grandparents owned a shop or this or that. True. But yeah. on average, I mean, you and I, we don't I don't come from a family of of business, owning things, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. So absolutely just diving into our experience as black women entrepreneurs, we are self-taught. We mm-hmm. had to find our way you know what i mean so we're already in an unbalanced playing field so Mm -hmm. for us equity we've experienced a lot of equity issues because we don't have the resources we don't have the things that you know a white woman entrepreneur or definitely a white man entrepreneur would have access to so so we're already behind in in starting this (laughs) absolutely and again this article goes on to say the use of the word equity isn't it has increased so a lot there has been a lot more conversation about the term equity and what that means for us um it's increased due to concerns about social justice and a desire for fairness and historic for historically oppressed people so that's what we're talking about historically oppressed groups of people such as black people indigenous the lgbtq plus community these are historically oppressed groups that um, while the law might deem things are equal, we know that there's that it isn't. <laughs> it's not quite equal because we are historically oppressed. And everything that that means, again, that we are a few steps behind. I, when I try to teach this to my um, students who are young, it's very simple. If you imagine everyone lining up and we're about to do a race, right? So you have you know some white people and some black people. Let's just use those two groups for example. We're all lined up. And we're about to you know take off for this race. However, I say okay to all my white people, I want you guys to take ten steps ahead, and then we'll start. That's exactly mm-hmm. what we mean. So it's equal because we're both participating in this race. But the equity is that 
historically oppressed people, the black people in my example, are 10 steps behind. So yes, we can catch up when we're certainly trying and that's what we're doing. We're continuing to fight for not just equality, but for equity in our society. Um, it's just, again, it's try to make it clear and simple for everyone to understand why we have to talk about equity and continue to fight for equity because it isn't fair. <laughs> it's, right. not, it's almost like that when segregation happened and it's like equal, but what, no, what is it? Separate, um, but equal. Yeah. Separate, but equal. Yeah, that's right. So I'm sorry. It was before we um, integrate it. So it was during segregation. You got the black schools, you got the white schools and yeah, both groups of kids can go to school, but the white schools had books Res and right. resources in different classes. They had the access to resources. The black schools did not. They were all in one early on one room with all the age groups, one teacher, hardly no books. I mean, so yeah. again, and you think about just, just to, um, to talk about this specific part. And then I want to talk about your example that you used too, but just thinking about all of the disparities, because like, so say yes. the black schools, the white schools, right. We know the black schools didn't have the same resources, but then the conditions of the school, then that leads to our health right. issues because we're historically, they don't take care of our, our schools where, we, where we're mm -hmm. living, where we, where we're attending. So it's just like, everything is like a domino effect yes. we're behind in every aspect. So, Absolutely. Which is why there has to be equity. There has to be more attention focused on creating um, these or allocating these exact resources that historically um, oppressed groups need, you know, really yeah. allocating the resources that they act, that they really need to create the same opportunities as those that are not oppressed. Yeah. And then the, the example you used about the race. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if there's 10 steps forward, not only do we have to catch up, we're tired because we, we had to work harder to get there. Right. <laughs> um, and that's, that's honestly, that's the beauty in our, mm -hmm. our people. Like I love black people because we're so strong, yes. but we were forced to be that way. So mm -hmm. by the time we catch up, we might surpass you might catch up, but mm -hmm. we're going to be exhausted. Our mental health is probably going to be affected because we had to work so much harder and we just watching mm -hmm. you breeze through your journey. Right. Yeah. Work. So I just, hard. I love that example because it's, it's, it just, it's so applicable to how mm -hmm. hard we have to work because there it's not equitable. Like we, we don't yeah. have that equity in um, a lot of things. Yes. And I, I, I really, again, I'm glad that we're talking about this and just thinking about, um, us as, you know, black women entrepreneurs and us starting our own business. Again, I'm not, not to say that there are not any white people that would start a business and not struggle. That's what we're talking about. We're not, um, you know, ignoring, um, or dismissing anyone's struggle or difficulties that they might have, but we just have to, we have to speak the truth, right? And when you're starting a business, once again, um, as a black woman, say versus a white woman, well, if, we, if these two women are starting a business, if the white woman has access to resources, meaning she might not have a whole lot of money, but she, someone in her family may be able to invest because historically they have generational wealth. They certainly have more wealth than, you know, um, the blacks, the black family. So she might have an uncle or, you know, a grand that can invest in the business. Um, also, okay. Say she doesn't even have that. She walks into the bank she is greeted nicely exactly. and um, she is, you know, I don't have the statistics with me, but I would say she's, you know, three times more likely to receive that business loan than a black woman strictly because of racism and stereotypes. I mean, before we even open up the, the finances to see, mm -hmm. you know, how the businesses are doing, a black woman walks into the bank it's like, um, what are you doing here? And okay, we got to dig deep and how, yeah. you know, it's just a lot more. Again, it's, it's like us working three times harder and not just working harder, but getting denied more. We know, yeah. again, we don't have the statistics here with us guys, but we know for sure that black people get denied home loans, uh, at significantly higher rates than white people, you know, whether it's a loan, um, a home loan, a bank loan, any so extra many things. funding, so, so many, many things. And, and, and that mm -hmm. just triggered me not to cut you off, but even right now I'm looking at potentially selling my house. So the appraisal process, right? I've seen this, mm -hmm. this has been a big thing like in the last couple of years with appraisals and black people having to remove family photos, not be present when the appraiser mm -hmm. is there because yeah. they're appraising our homes much less than mm -hmm. they're appraising white people's homes. And that's just not fair. Like we have the exact mm -hmm. same house 
this lady, mm -hmm. um, I can't re remember what state, but she did the appraisal process once her, mm -hmm. she was black. Her husband was white. They had family photos and all of that. And I think once they got another appraisal, removed all of the family pictures, had a white person there with the appraisal. I think their home appraised for like a hundred thousand dollars more. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. like, just, just having these conversations, being recognizing the, the, the lack of equity um, it's just a step in the right direction because that's mm -hmm. really unfair. That's unfair. For right. the same house. We're paying our dues to try to, you mm -hmm. know, build, build wealth in our families, but we don't have, we have the lower hand yet. We have the shorter end Absolutely. of the because of the color of our skin period. Absolutely. And so again, oppressed, historically oppressed people, black people specifically, you know, we suffer this just because of systematic racism. So everything really is based off of a lot of people are like, you know, oh, would slavery is over. We don't talk about slavery. We don't talk about like a lot of people want to forget that all of this stuff happened, but you, it's impossible to because our history and the way that, you know, black people were brought over here and what we all had to endure before we were actually free and then still had to endure, you know, Jim Crow and the civil rights movement. Just so many things have happened to black people in this in this country that um it's it has never been equal so <laughs> it's never really been equal and therefore there actually is no equity you know what mm -hmm. i mean we just it just isn't um but to kind of go back to like uh, talking about, you know, being an entrepreneur, starting a business, you know, again, imagine the white woman goes in the bank, she's able to secure that loan, um, or she gets a investor and you have a black woman who again, may not have access to resources, may not be able to get an investor. So right off the bat, you have two women trying to start a business, but one is slightly ahead of the other because of the color of her skin, because of her history in this country and what she might be able to, um, to gain compared to a black woman. It's very difficult. I mean, as black female entrepreneurs, we know for sure it's, it's a lot of more, it's a lot more difficulties to start a business, to keep the business going, to be black in America. It, it really is. <laughs> yeah. And it's not funny. It's just, I laugh because it's a little, it's sad. It's sad. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one thing we want to continue to push to people that, it's hard for Kia and I, we've been in this business for, mm -hmm. I don't even know, since 2015, 16. And it's yeah. been hard because there's so many barriers, but the reason we continue to push and just try to motivate each other to stay in this is because we want mm -hmm. to build generational wealth for our kids and just kind of help our families have the upper hand eventually, you know what I mean? Have those resources Absolutely. eventually. And so it's important for us to continue with this business and just push through all of the barriers, mm -hmm. all of, the exhaustion, um, mm -hmm. the denials, you know, the, the over being overcharged for things. Um, yes. because it's important to just try to push through and, and, you know, set things up for the future. That's, that's really all we can do. And that's why we stick in, you know, stick to this to, to try to Absolutely. keep our business afloat and grow mm -hmm. it as best we can, even though we lack certain resources. Yes, I agree. It's important for us and also to continue to support other black owned businesses because it's the black owned businesses in our community that's going to really try to bridge that gap and create equity in our community for each other. Um, and I just want to say, you know, shout out to uh, the Spice Suite in DC and the owner, Angel. I mean, what I think about what she recently did in our area is amazing. And that is what, again, creates equity. She, you know, bought all of this space to create like a strip mall to house these different black women entrepreneurs. So it's giving them like an equal opportunity because again, for black people, especially, we have a difficult time finding um, space, securing funding, things like that. So you might have a business, your business might be going pretty well, but say you want to get into an actual brick and mortar store, or, you know, you want to grow, you want to expand. You don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. We, a lot of us might not be coming from, backgrounds, you know, parents or grandparents that were business owners or can afford to send us to business school. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of different things that again, happen in the black community that creates the space where we're behind. And I like what Angel and the Spice Suite is doing in DC. You know, she has the strip mall and she's opened up the space for entre black female entrepreneurs to be able to sell their products. She's creating the space for black women to sell their products. And also she's opening up almost like a business school and it's free. You just have to register for it. She's giving black women an opportunity to meet professionals who can help them, who can guide us, you know, whether it's marketing and media, um, 
whether it's how to invest, how to, um, you know, secure funding or getting a loan. She's having professionals who are um, proficient in those areas come in and teach black women, because again, uh, for uh, uh, different reasons, we just didn't have access to some of that information and she's bringing that information to us. So I really like that. And that's why, again, it's just so important to support black owned businesses because look what we do for each other. We really are trying to create equity within our community. Yeah. And doing it, doing it uh, really for the strength of building generational wealth, because she, Mm -hmm. she recently did either an interview or a post or something where she said, you know, she always has these girls pop up, right? For, for yeah. she doesn't charge them. It's a really an, a fair opportunity. She just wants them to succeed. She was mm-hmm. saying how one of the women, one of the ladies, they grew their audience through popping up with her and now they're not with her anymore. And she was very proud. She was like, look, mm-hmm. I helped her get her start. She built an yeah. audience and now she's, she's not with me anymore, but she's mm-hmm. elevating. And I, I like yeah. that because it was, it was um very positive. It's like, Oh, she left me. I gave her a platform. She left me. <laughs> um, no, it's it's her. Mm-hmm. Like I helped you, and I'm happy for you that you're plateauing at this point. I was able to give you an opportunity to grow and start, and now expand on your own. So I, I just love the yeah. energy of like doing it, but doing it mm-hmm. for for the good and not just for you know yeah, for some self recognition. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm-hmm. I agree. I like that, and and so I. I like what she's doing. And I really like what Glam Marina is doing in terms of also trying to create equity. We, while we haven't opened up, a, you know, a mall or anything like that, we've partnered with some black female entrepreneurs um, and some other small business owners um, to, you know, provide samples and things like that of their products, you know, at free of charge to give to our customers, to introduce our customers to an up and coming, you know, um, artist or, you know, someone that has created a a wonderful product, but may not have the money, the resources to really put themselves out there. So I really like that we had started doing that a couple years ago. And then with our um, affiliate program, you know, I really like that we gave an opportunity for, you know, our customers and followers and people that already loved our brand an opportunity to make some extra money because I think it's great. It's great that you guys love our brand and that you want to tell people about it. What we want to be able to give back to you is to make some money off of that. So, you know, our, with our affiliates, they uh, shared, you know, information about our brand, they shared their own code, and then they were able to make, you know, a little bit of money from that just by, again, sharing something that they love. And so I like that we are really also as a small business, um, Glamouring is really trying to bridge the gap and create equity within our personal communities. Yeah, for sure. It's important. It's important. I mean, Angel's doing it. We're doing it. We're going to continue to do it. But the more we have these conversations, we want to inspire other businesses, whether you're black owned or not, Mm -hmm. to do the same thing. Give black people an opportunity, give underserved communities an opportunity, because Mm -hmm. it's just going to, you know, it's going to make us better as a society if we all end up getting to, you know, somewhat even playing field and have that equity. Mm -hmm. Um, So we just encourage people to, to try to do the same, whatever way you can to try to provide opportunities to people who wouldn't necessarily be able to have those opportunities provided to them. Definitely. I mean, even when you think about um, there's, and there's so many different organizations in the DMV. I love DC for that because they really do look out for their people. Um, I think it's the Congress Heights community center Mm -hmm. and I believe it's another organization, but they provide, you know, Zoom like trainings. I went to like or attended a financial workshop. It was free. I got an email about it. And it was like such an eye opening. It was like awakening for me. And again, um, I would have there's in business, especially there's like so much, right? There's so many terms. There's a lot to think about with money and, and getting a loan and all. And sometimes if you don't have, you know, any access, if you don't have any examples of someone who's run a business before, you really don't know what to do. If you don't go to business school, like Nicole and I, you're kind of like starting fresh and it's like self-taught. A lot of times you don't know where to begin, So Mm -hmm. I love that, you know, we have a good community of organizations that really are trying to help black entrepreneurs with some of the information that is just not readily available. It's just not easy information. It's like, it's like hidden. Sometimes I feel like as a black entrepreneur, I'm like, there are things that just are hidden and Mm -hmm. you can Google, but it's information overload. So it's like, where do I start? You know what I mean? We don't have a whole lot of guidance. Um, If you don't have someone already in your family that went to school for a business or owned a business 
before. And again, historically, that is the case with um, with black entrepreneurs. So I'm um, shout out to Congress Heights Community Center and all the organizations out in the D.C. DMV area that is offering free resources to black entrepreneurs because it's so important for us. Yes, definitely. We need more of it. We need more of it. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a real and valid thing. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. And I, I just yes. really hope that with this podcast episode with, you know, Women's History Month, having this as a hashtag that more people recognize it and just kind of like do their part, you know, do something to, yeah. you know, push embracing equity a little bit forward. So again, I mean, with equity in this episode being about embracing equity, I just wanted to kind of touch on the fact that how Glen Marina has always been such an inclusive brand and just giving all women, all black women specifically a face and representation. And that kind of resonates with equity because as we mentioned in last week's episode, there's this thing called code switching and kind of how mm -hmm. you appear up at, in the workplace and things like that. Right. And that affects equity too, because it's like, if you come in with straight hair and a certain type of outfit, you might get more opportunities. You might be given more resources to thrive in the workplace. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's similar in, in society in general. So how you show up, how you appear it affords you certain opportunities. Um, it Definitely. gives you, you know, a little bit of a step up in life. So what we try to do, if you don't know, is we show women of all skin tones, all sizes, all hair textures and types, because it's important for us to represent women, make women feel like you are enough, no matter how you are, how you look, absolutely, where you are with your, you know, fitness journey, your health and wellness and things mm -hmm. like that. So that just really resonates with that whole equity theme because unfortunately, just like we said with the black woman versus white woman, mm -hmm. sometimes even with colorism, that's a whole nother episode, but sometimes just the way you simply look, it doesn't afford you the same opportunities as the next woman, even if you're both black, you know, if your hair texture mm -hmm. and your skin color and mm -hmm. things like that. So it's important for us with our brand to mm -hmm. highlight all shapes and sizes, all skin tones, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that we continue to push the narrative that we're all beautiful, we're all equal, and we all deserve equitable opportunities. Yeah, I like that you said that, that we all deserve, because exactly, not only are we all beautiful and, you know, embrace, you know, how your body is now, but again, just that you deserve also to have clothes that fit comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, you deserve to be able to, to have very stylish active wear um, that's representative of who you are and what in your background. And you deserve yeah. to be able to wear things that are cute and, you know, not just fit well, but affordable, you know, fashionable in that you deserve to have a seat at the table wherever you are in your fitness journey. Um, occasionally at times, you know, you might feel like I don't belong here. Um, because you look a different way or they look different from you, you might feel as though I don't belong here. You might walk into, you know, an active wear store and nothing that no one looks like you. It doesn't look like this is going to fit because everybody's just running around here skinny. And so that's why, again, like Nicole mentioned, Glamorina really strives to um, create equity within our community by providing a variety of sizes and showcasing, you know, models and regular women really um, in different shapes, sizes, skin colors, because you deserve to feel and look as beautiful as you want in whatever active wear you want to wear. So that's very, very yeah. important for us. I do want to leave with just this one quote. Um, it says the route to achieving equity will not be accomplished through treating everyone equally. It will be achieved by treating everyone justly according to their circumstances. And this is from Paula Dressel from Race Matters Institute. Love it. Love that. And, and it just popped in my head when you were talking about this, the equity in, in size inclusivity. It's like, how am I going to get fit? How am I going to get healthier and work out if I don't have clothes that fit me? Right. And it's just like, we know a lot of women struggle with that. So it just popped in my mind. I just kind of wanted to put it out there because I know that's going to resonate with some people. Absolutely. We, our, our plus sizes sell out fast and it's, it's a big demand for it. So I think that part of equity and what we're doing is just big and important because mm -hmm. 
how how really if i don't find anything that fits me especially it's not cute it's not inspiring me how am i going to get to my next stage how am i going to get further in my health and wellness journey if Mm -hmm. if the the equity doesn't exist because you don't Mm -hmm. even make stuff that fits me in my yes and then a lot of brands and we're not, we won't mention any names, but in a lot of brands, I feel like they dress the person in the fitness journey as if they're towards the end of their fitness journey, like if they've made it already. Mm-hmm. And so Glamorina wants to provide clothing for wherever you are, like for real in your fitness mm-hmm. journey. If you're just now starting, you still deserve to have clothes that look and feel good and, you know, move with you. Not like, okay, well, once I lose this 10 pounds and I can get into that legging and that bra yeah. set, you know, from certain, you know, white owns active yeah. wear brands. No, yeah. you don't have to wait till you get there. You can feel and look good wherever you are and you deserve to have clothing that fits and feels good on you. And that's what Glamorina strives to do. Yep. We're all about the reality. This is the reality of the world we live in, not the filters, yes. not the, the photoshops, but real mm-hmm. bodies and just understanding yes. that everyone um, deserves to have a space where they belong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, where everybody belongs. Where everybody belongs. So mm-hmm. we're going to go ahead and close out this week's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode of Behind mm-hmm. Glam Arena, Moms on a Mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Definitely. This was such a great topic. I love it. Um, be sure to visit glamarina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. Stay well. And until next episode, try. Bye-bye.